Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will look at using the Dairy NRC, the model itself, in terms of ration formulation. The first question we might ask is why would a user, a farmer, a veterinary nutritionist want to use the model? First, it will adjust feed energy values and other nutrient values based on the actual dry matter intake. For example, if a cow eats 50 pounds of dry matter or 55 pounds of dry matter, the net energy value of that feed or feeds in that ration will change. So will the rumen undegradable protein values change, and we also will see some differences in available mineral values based on intake and levels of feeds. Second, critical, this module has a microbial analyzer that estimates amino acid production and flow that then can be complemented with the rumen undegradable amino acid sources. So as a result, we can get a much better look at the true amino acid being delivered to the dairy cow or in the small intestine. And finally, it allows you to fine-tune your base ration. However, there also are some limitations you should be aware of as a user. First of all, this is not a balancing program. If you are short a certain amount of energy or amino acid, you have to decide which feed and how much to put in to get it to balance correctly. Second of all, we must have very accurate dry matter intake because it really drives the program and changes the numbers. Next, we need a very extensive forage analysis because we have various energy, protein, and other fractions that must be tested. We cannot just use book values all the time. So your cost to analyzing feeds will be more important, or any way we can improve the accuracy of the data going in will improve the output from the model. Next, there are no amino acid requirements listed. You're going to have to go to another source to determine what the amounts should be in the program. A bit of a weakness, but that is what the NRC committee decided to do. And finally, there are several values that we as a dairy farmer or an extension person just do not have, such as PAF values or rate of protein passage values, which must be estimated using some type of a guideline that you, the user, have developed. Now, when we look at the model here in just a few minutes, here are the various sections we'll walk through. We could spend many minutes talking about them, but just give you a bit of a feel or overview. There are five major sections, the input section, the feed section, the ration, the reports, and the help section. Under the inputs, here's where you do some customizing to actually describe your animal. And there are program settings, animal descriptions, production, and then management environment. Let's take a quick walking tour through the model. Let's begin by looking at the input section. And under there, you'll see there are four tabs. And we'll go through each of these tabs. Very friendly program, very easy to navigate across. So now we have clicked on program settings. The key ones you will look at are on the left side. We can either go metric or English. In most cases, we will check the English one because here in Illinois or in the U.S., that's a system we use. And then we can enter feeds either on a dry matter or as is basis. Most farmers will want it on an as fed basis because it still will give you some values on a dry matter. So generally speaking, you will check English and as fed. You can look at the rest of these, but by and large, those settings will be automatic and will be left as you have set on the screen. We've now clipped on animal descriptions. Here is where you describe the animal or herd or group that you're going to look at the ration on. We can look at lactating, dry cows, growing heifers, and calves. You will just toggle down on that arrow key. Describe the age. Not too terribly critical unless we have a growth requirement for young milk producing cows. Body weight. Not terribly critical, but should be representative of the herd best number to use is put in some numbers of cull cows that you've called in the last six months. Days pregnant. Critical because as this gets closer to 279 days, the pregnancy requirement rapidly increases. This is important on dry cow rations. Body condition score is important because it will adjust and change to meet body condition scores that you are targeting. Days in milk is critical because when it's less than 90 days, you will find that dry matter intake will decline. So you can play with these settings and see how the model drives them. Lactation numbers, straightforward. Age at first calving, fairly important for growth factors. Calving interval, again, a factor on reproductive performance. And we have calf variables on the right side. Now you notice we've clicked on the production. And now we'll put in the mature body weight of this animal. We have, can pick our various breed we have. We have calf birth weight, which you can adjust. We'll again determine the pregnancy requirement, especially as calf gets close to calving. And then we put in milk production, either on kilograms or pound basis. The fat test in the herd, 
And the neat thing now, you can enter either crude protein or true protein, and you can vary that independent of the fat level, which means that for some reason you have a higher protein test or a lower protein test compared to fat test, you can vary it. And you can also enter the lactose test if your milk plant is giving that to you as well. These are all independent variables. If you change one, it will change requirements of the animal. And finally, we will touch on the management slash environmental area. And here you can change temperatures and wind speeds, has a dramatic effect on heifer grazing programs and also in terms of coat condition. If a heifer has a very short coat, she has much less insulating value, therefore it will increase her requirements for meet her maintenance requirements. So this is very important on heifers. Same thing under heat stress for heifers, depending in terms of what kind of heat stress these animals may be under. Also, you'll notice if we're on a grazing condition, we can indicate the distance between pasture and milking center and the distance of a one-way trip, which will affect maintenance requirements and also topography. If it's flat, as you and I know, that's like going up and down steps. We expend more energy going up and down steps than if it's a flat room. Same thing with your dairy cow. You can change that topography and that will change maintenance requirements. So we can do a lot of different things in looking at what impact it has on nutrient requirements. Okay, now we've gone to the top of our model and clicked on that second box on the left, feeds. Remember earlier, we were input, so now we're in the second box, feeds. At this point, you now enter the various feeds you want to put into the ration. So you would click, if you initially started with no ration, this box in the upper left-hand corner would be empty. So you can see in this ration, we have corn silage, we have tallow, we have blood meal. You can read the rest of them as well. This is what sits in this ration. If I want to add another ration, I would go to the first block that says add feeds to the ration. Once you click on that, you'll go to a big menu that you can toggle down and just about any feed you want is in the library. You will click on that and it will jump up to this box over here. Again, if you are not going to feed blood meal, you would then highlight blood meal, click on the second box and that would remove it from the ration. We can also add feed to the library. So that is the third block we see as we go from top to bottom on the left side. And if we want to remove a feed from the feed library because you are no longer with that feed company or you are never going to use citrus pulp, you could eliminate it. Generally speaking, this is one that you would add today and six months from now not have in there. A good example would be ruminant meat and bone meal. You should never have that in your feed library because it is illegal to feed. Then on the right side, you can see here is your feed composition description. Here you have legume forage hay in mature. Its category is a forage, legume grass. An international feed number is listed there that comes out of the book. And then you have all the nutrient characteristics which you can change. A few of these are locked in. You cannot change. But by and large, if you had a forage test result and your crude protein content was 19.5%, you would highlight that area and enter 19.5. And you do the same thing for calcium or any other nutrient on here. And then you may want to save that in the feed library if you wish. However, I would recommend you create a new feed and put your feeds in because then you always have the NRC numbers listed here. And that's an awful nice working base. If you do not have that feed in front of you, then use the book values. You'll notice there's a slide bar. And so there's many more minerals listed below that. So we're just giving you a screen capture of what is listed here. We have now moved on to the ration list. And you can now see we're doing rations. At this point, we have that same ration listed. This is pounds per day and percent of total. So you can see, for example, in this ration, 18% of the ration is made up of legume grass, hay, and mature. And we are feeding 11.9 pounds on a dry matter base. If you want to do this on an as-fed basis, you would go back and click on as-fed, and this would then pop up there. Now, you can see the total dry matter intake, and this is for a cow giving 120 pounds of milk. So don't let that big number surprise you. This is a very high-producing cow at 120 pounds of milk. If your dry matter intake was 60 pounds, you would type in 60 here and then set to 100%. And automatically, this screen would then jump around, and all these numbers would decrease roughly about 10%. So you can move around and change this if you know it, or if you do not know, you can hit the estimate intake, and then it comes off the NRC equation that's uh, universal sitting in the unit. Another very powerful screen. And finally, we get to the one that everybody's interested in, and that is what is the reports. Now, you'll notice here there's a number of different blocks we can look at. So you will check those. So if you do not check a box, you'll never get a ration. And so I've seen people stuck for many minutes 
waiting for the computer to give a ration. So I can look at a summative report, which you'll see shortly, an energy protein. You can look at dry matter, and we'll look at a few of these, but you can look at a lot of different reports and decide which ones you want. If you check four or five of these boxes, that's the sequence they're going to come off with, and you'll have to toggle through them before you'll get to the one you want. Or you can look at just the one you wish to see. Remember, if you don't have a printer hooked up, don't hit the print report. It'll cause the computer to get a bit confused because it's looking for a printer. And as you can see, you can set your printer up to set the size and output layout that you wish to have. Now let's look at some of the output screens. Here's your first one. This is your summary report. You can see we checked that box, and this is a two-page report. Here's the first one. You can see the animal description. Here is the dietary nutrient balance, net energy, metabolizable protein, calcium, phosphorus, potassium, expressed in terms of mcals or pounds. Again, if you were in the metric system, you would now have kilograms of metabolizable protein and grams of calcium. Sorry, we can't mix and match. Some of us would like to have the metabolizable protein in pounds and calcium and phosphorus in grams. Sorry about that. Now you can see the actual dry matter intake predicted. Powerful tool. Here's your next block. How much milk energetically can I get from this ration? 117 pounds. How much metabolizable protein do I have? 110. Therefore, protein is limiting before energy. If you want to leave it that way, this cow should gain some weight. Or you can balance it out. You can see the milk production, 120 pounds. You can see the lose one body condition score would never would happen. It says 305 days. It won't happen because you have more energy than you have protein, and protein will slow you down. You can see the weight change here. If you got 120 pounds of milk, this cow is going to lose about four tenths of a pound. So if, to make this 100, if this allowable net energy milk was 120 pounds, then this number would zero out. Here's a powerful one, folks, on the protein side. Degradable protein required. 6.5 pounds, supplied 6.3, we're short on degradable protein, the microbes are waiting for protein, i.e. put some urea, put some raw soybean, put a degradable protein source in the diet. You can see undegradable protein, the requirement for this 120 pound cow is 4.6 pounds, we're short again, you're going to have to increase the blood meal or do something, we're short on protein. So again, you can see very nicely how you can look at the uh, amino acid, and I should say the protein profile here, how much of the metabolizable protein comes from the bacteria, how much comes from the rumen. So if you came in and put in a tenth of a pound of urea, you would see the balance change. You would see microbial protein, bacterial protein change also. And for some of us who don't relate well to metabolizable protein, you can see this ration contains 15.8% crude protein, of which nearly 10% is rumen degradable and 6% is rumen undegradable protein. Again, listen to the module on protein, though, because this RUP number is not the same number we had two years ago. Here is the second page of that same report. Powerful information. Rather than bore you with read all the numbers, you can see here's the number, some numbers we're looking for. Your ADF, your non-fiber carbohydrate is there. If you're in a dry cow ration, there sits your DCAD. Ether extracts, a big fancy name for fat. This one's 6%. This fat level is very high at this stage of the game. Again, you've got some target concentration numbers there. And here sits your ration now, broken out again on a pounds and dry matter base and as fed basis. So as a user, you can see how that ration looks like. And again, broken down at percent of the dry matter. This is a screen we saw earlier under uh, ration here. It's nicely put together. No question, this is the one you want to print. This is the one you're really going to work at. This is the the, as we'd say, the A screen in terms of evaluating your ration. However, you see, we can uncheck the summary report. We check now energy and protein supply. May have to get your bifocals on to read this one a little closely, but now you can see in terms of where these feeds are coming from. So if we take our legume grass, hay, we can see in our 12 pounds of dry matter, we're supplying 7.4 pounds of TDN, and you can see where these nutrients are coming from and how they total up. So now you can see where you want to increase a certain value. So if you're looking for more rumen undegradable protein, you can see which feed is providing more of it, and you can select which way to go. So again, you may not want this report, or if you're wondering, well, why am I short on a certain nutrient? You can be a bit of a detective and find out where it's coming from or which feed I might select or increase the amount of in the diet.
We went down to our third box now. This is the small intestine amino acid supply. Again, if you're really into amino acid uh, supply, and if you heard Dr. Clark talk in one of the earlier modules, he loves this one here because it shows how much lysine, for example, is coming flow-wise, pounds per day of lysine. Uh, you can see about a half a pound per day. We can see the uh, digestible flow, percent of metabolizable protein in this diet. And if you're reading amino acid balance, you can pretty well read and see what contribution we have in this diet. Most of us are not going to be very comfortable this year or next year with it. But in the future, this is what the chicken and swine people were looking at. Finally, we checked the bottom one. This is mineral requirement. Again, a very detailed report. Again, breaking out the requirement that we saw under the summary table. But now we also have total dietary supply, absorbable supply, the difference in here, and ration density. So this gives you a much more in-depth look at our macro and micro minerals here in the program. And finally, we see, again, the breakdown on vitamins A, D, and E in the program as well. So again, this may be a favorite one. To be honest with you, I usually look at the summary report, and if something looks funky, then I will come back and look at the mineral requirement, look at the amino acid supply or energy protein supply. Obviously, some of these other ones fit more to growing heifer diets or dry cow diets, and so it just depends where you're fitting. Now, let's start to wrap up this rather long module. How are we going to use the module? Here's how I'm using the module. First of all, I go to Spartan. That's my software of choice. If you're with a feed company, that would be your ration software program. And I'm going to build and balance the ration using the old technology. Once I got my amounts and I'm saying this is a pretty good ration because this one will have a balancer with it. There's the power. Remember, the NRC doesn't have a balancer. So now I've got this looks like my current ration. Then I will take the results from step one, in my case, the Spartan, and transfer these feed amounts and ingredients into the module. Then I can let the model take and evaluate the microbial and ration specs. Some of you would call that fine-tuning. Once I've done fine-tuning the ration, I'm going to take the results from the NRC module and dump it back into my Spartan one because I have a nice output screen. I can build TMRs. I can look at some other features that is really neat in Michigan or your company module that you want to use, and I'm done. Now, maybe you want to buy the NRC. And here is simply list your contact sources. The two most common is the National Academy Science Press. You can purchase it there. That's about $50. You can also go to Hordes Dairyman and purchase it. I believe that is $60, a little bit higher. So those are the two most common sources here in the U.S. to purchase the book. If you're going to buy multiple quantities, you want to go to the National Academy Press because it'll get cheaper as you buy 10, 50, or 100. Well, that concludes our very long module on the dairy NRC model itself. Hopefully, you might see this. It's a beautiful system and certainly excellent to fine-tune rations and to look more in-depth of your feeding program. Thanks, and have a good day.